Hey, church family, glad to have you back. Uh, thank you for joining us and taking time. You're here, so that means you're interested in what's what's happening uh, starting next weekend, and we're real grateful for that. Uh, just honored that you're, you're coming along with us for that. We'd love to answer questions that you have. I'm going to give you some specifics uh, here, but I wanted to first start by saying, please, any specifics that you have, go ahead and uh, comment on Facebook. We're watching that, and we'll be answering those directly. If it's something that we're already going to cover, then we'll just know we've already covered that. But if it's something we've not, we'll, we'd love to have those questions. So please uh, take time now to make comments. Or as we go through, if there's things that seem unclear, you can do that. A couple of bullet points just so we're all on the same page. We're going to be having, starting next Sunday, three services, 815, 935, and 1105. Uh, the online service will be still at 935, just as it is now. As normal, Morning Mug will start at 920, just as it is now. So those times are all the same starting next Sunday. Um, there will be kid and teen programming at 935 only. We'll talk more about that in a minute. By the way, uh, shameless plug here, what we're, what we're doing when we talk to our impact team members, our, our volunteers, is we're saying to them, we want you to feel comfortable. We're not wanting to try to twist your arm to get you to come back to, to volunteer. If you weren't quite ready to come back with your family, um, and because of, of, of concerns and the virus and things, there are a number of volunteers who normally are here who aren't ready to come back and volunteer, and we're, we're totally understandable, understanding of that. Um, because of that, we're cutting our children's and uh, children's program back to just to the 935 service. Uh, if you've been saying, you know, I've been thinking about getting into children's ministry, helping out, making an impact that way. Uh, now would be a great time for you to talk to Cam, and we'll let you know more about how to do that in just a minute so that we can add more volunteers, uh, more impact team members, both to the children's and teen ministry and hospitality. We're going to need uh, help in lots of different areas because, again, some of our folks are uh, have reason to be a little more concerned, and we, we totally respect that, and uh, we want to help people come back as they're ready to do that. Uh, the three services will go this way. The first service we're asking, is, as Keith's mentioned, asking people to wear masks the entire time. That gives a, a level of comfort for others around you uh, who are preferring that. So at, at 8.15, we ask you to wear a mask as you come in, while you're in your seat, and as you leave. The, the 9.35 and 11.05 service, we ask that you wear a mask as you're coming in. So just like you would at a restaurant where you wear a mask until you get to your seat and then you can take it off to eat, same sort of thing here. So wear your mask until you get into your seat. Uh, then you can take it, off, take it off and put it back on as you as you uh, leave to go out to your car and all of that. If you do have to get up during the service to, to go check on something or go to the bathroom or something, just put your mask back on. We'd really appreciate that. That way, as people are interacting with each other, they've all got their masks on. Uh, online service, you don't need to wear a mask. Uh, some of you are just wearing pajamas. It's totally fine. However you want to do that, that's all good. Um, but at 8.15, uh, mask fully, 9.35, 11.05, mask uh, until you're in your seats. If you have questions, as I mentioned before, please write those in. Um, and we're watching Facebook now for those. We'll be adding some of those as we go. Uh, but let me have Cam come in and, and give a couple, little bit of information uh, about the children's ministry specifically. Uh, you'll notice that Cam has blue hair. It's not a cookie monster uh, thing that he's trying to do. It is a situation where he was, uh, I think he lost a bet of some sort at VBS at, at camp. And so now he has blue hair. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't like, uh, the cookie monster, you know, on Sesame Street where the hair is totally blue, but, um, I'm so glad just to be here with you today. Uh, we are excited about children's, uh, returning, um, back to church. And, and you might have some questions about that. You might wonder how it looks, uh, what we are going to do for you is, is for sure is keep all the safety precautions. We're going to make sure all of our teachers are wearing masks. Um, the kids don't have to wear masks, which might be something you've thought about uh, under 12. Mm -hmm. So we want to follow Williamson County's guidelines with that. Uh, we are actually disinfecting, wiping down all of our rooms. We will have a nursery. We'll have walkers. We'll have twos, threes. Uh, preschool, two rooms for preschool, a pre-K room and an overflow room. We'll also have kindergarten, first grade, second grade, um, third grade, and preteen ministry, fourth and fifth over in the farmhouse. So with, with all that said, we'd love for you to just come and pre-register. This is so important, pre-register online um, because then that will help us prepare how many kids come and we will have pre-tagged security tags on a table alphabetically just for you to pick up on a table. 
So what we're trying to do with that is limit the touches um, because, you know, if you go and check in normally, then you're pulling the tag, putting it on, all that kind of work. We're going to pre-do that for you. So it's just so important to pre-register. Here's a couple reasons why. Um, pre-registration is important for us because we're limiting six kids per room in the children's hallway. Mm-hmm. So all those rooms go up to first grade. Um, and then second and third grade, we can have up to 15 kids socially distancing in the activity center, right. and then 38 kids in the preteen. So just with the one service, so if you're planning to come back, we want you to be consistent with this, is pre-registering your kids. That's like a really big thing for us and children. Okay, let me ask you a question. So yeah. th- that gives a lot of comfort, I think, to parents to know there's only going to be five other kids in the room with the teachers. But is that really real? Like, am I really going to go pick up my kids and have like 18 kids jammed in there because we didn't want to turn anybody away? Or what's that, what's that mean? Yeah, no, what's good? Thank you for bringing that up. That's very important. We really want to keep it, it social distancing. Actually, that's a big reason for and not having as many kids because, you know, kids, when they get in a room, they go, you know, if we had too many in there, it wouldn't be good. We are capping our rooms. So when you register... It's almost first come, first serve basis. You got to get in there, register your kids, um, get them in the class, and the class will close at when we get to the max of eight total, two adults, six kids. Okay. So let's say the preteens, all of a sudden we have 38 registered. It would be awesome to have 38 preteens. Right. At 38, the room closes. It's, it's, that's it. No one else. And we will put like signs on the door. We will, then you'll have to take your kids to church. So I think that might only happen to you one time. Right. <laughs> you have to right. take your kid to church because we're filled. So that's why it's so important to pre-register. For so us. if they go to pre-register and it doesn't, if there's no spots available, they just won't be able to pre-register for that age group. Is that correct? Correct. And okay. they'll have to take your child to okay. church. Okay. Yes. yes. That's very. That's yes. very important. That's very important. So yes, get on. Uh, get on quickly. What's the best way for them to do that? Is that link live now? Uh, I believe it is. It's live on the website, and uh, Scott's going to be putting that up. It's all set, ready to go. Um, if it's not up to date, it will sure be up on Monday. Okay, and we'll be advertising that a lot through the week. Uh, so we're watching uh, social media and emails and all those kind of things. If you have any questions, feel free to to reach out um, there. One question that came in, will there be YouTube links for Kids Church if they can't attend in, per- in person? Yes, totally. We are going to keep the YouTube uh, stuff going. We're going to keep sending those links out to your emails, uh, all the way from the uh, three-year-olds all the way up to, to the preteen ministry. So we'll be doing the, the little preschool lesson that we'll send out, also the K through third lesson, and it will be the same lesson that we do that Sunday. So you'll be able to get that ahead of time, Be able to, the kids will be able to view it and watch it. Also, preteens are a little bit different. We're Zooming those. So we're Zooming live, but we're recording it like today we Zoomed with the preteens, the fourth and fifth graders, mm-hmm. and we're recording it, then we're going to send it out to your email later to be able for you to view. But there can be some interaction that way, which is great. Correct, Perfect. correct. Like with the Zoom is cool because like if they come on live with the Zoom, which will be happening on Sunday mornings at the 935, they can just sit and watch. Great, great question. Now, one question you might have too, I want to just clarify very clear about this. We are checking temperatures of all adults who serve and teach, and we are checking the kids' temperatures when they okay. come in. So they're not like 100, 100% accurate, but we want to make sure if your child is sick within the past 24 hours, please don't bring them to church. Just make sure of that. Just discern that. It'd be like a, a school thing. If your child's been sick, you know, runny nose, fever, whatever, please don't bring them to church. Um, keep them at home so where they can get better and then come back and see us. That's always a good idea, Sunday. by the way, but especially during, during this season. Uh, there's several questions about uh, what will uh, volunteers, teachers do. Are they going to be using hand sanitizer themselves? Are they wearing masks? Just may speak to the Adults. Yes, uh, all of our teachers will be wearing masks uh, as they come in the building, as they go down the hall. Um, once they get in the classroom, uh, they're going to be able to just kind of settle down. Once we get in about 15 minutes in, the teachers are going to have to be able to take their mask off a little bit, distancing from the kids to be able to teach. So it's real. I don't know if you've ever had a mask on and someone doesn't understand you. We'll try to teach a four and five year old with a mask on. They won't understand you. Um, so we're going to be able to have that off and, and be able to distance from them and uh, be able to communicate God's word clearly. We feel like that's something that- And we do have lines with. marked in the room. So there is a six mm-hmm. foot deal. We'll have the kids back in one section and then we'll be six foot. That's one of the reasons we're limiting the number of, of students. So we don't have 25 students on top of each other. Correct. That's great. Uh, there may be other questions that come in. I'll pull you back up, but I think yeah. that was all the ones awesome. we had for children's. Yay. So uh, I'm gonna have Drew come in now and he can tell us a little bit about the student programming. Uh, one, one question that came in, Drew, right off the top before you get into- some of the details, there's a question about 
will high school be meeting on Sunday and Wednesday night? Like, what is the midweek programming? How does that affect it as we're talking about Sunday morning? This moves. Um, so, oh, the question is about midweek? Yes. What, what, is, what does our announcement have to do with midweek? Is midweek being changed, or how does that work? Oh, midweek, uh, midweek will stay the same. So Wednesday night will be a high school, week, or high school night from 645 to 815. Okay. Sunday night will be middle school from 645 to 815. Okay. So on Sunday morning, then, we're yes. offering programming just during the 935 service. Is that, that is correct? correct. Okay. So what classes are, do we have coming then? Uh, so for the 935 hour, uh, we will have three classes, uh, one class for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade guys, and one class for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade girls, and then we will also have a high school class, that is co-ed. Okay. Uh, now, uh, at one point, you, you were saying we weren't going to do high school uh, Sunday morning programming anymore, the Sunday school class, so now you're saying you're having a high school class. Tell me about that. What's happening there? Uh, so basically what's happening there is uh, before COVID happened, uh, we were making the transition for our high schoolers to move out of Sunday school to go into either attending the church as a whole um, or uh, serving in the church. Right. Um, with COVID keeping everyone apart, uh, we figured that right now the most important thing is building that community, giving them a place to hang out, a place to connect, those kind of things. Um, so we do still have that plan in motion where at some point we will be um, pushing our students to serve or be a part of the service. Uh, but for right now, we feel like it's best that everyone st- kind of comes back together. Let me, let me, since apart. We're all... Together, apart. With distance. Yes. I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, since we're there, let me, let me stop just a second. So uh, for people who haven't heard this before or don't understand the rationale of this, why is it that you're wanting to take... Why are you why are you wanting to get kids started? Is it so we need more help, or what what's the what's the point of this? All right, so the idea of moving the uh, high schoolers into attending church or, or attending the church as a whole or serving um, is because uh, there's a group that did a study about why students uh, leave church, leave the faith after they graduate high school. So the the number that's usually thrown around is about seventy percent of our students um, will leave the faith once they graduate high school, which is horrifying. Yes. By the way, don't let that sound like a number. That's that's horrifying. So uh, there's a church, uh, there's a uh, an institute that did a study on why, mm-hmm. um, not just okay, they're seventy. What's the cause? What's the issue? And they've determined through various studies through different churches and things like that, they determine that the further a youth ministry gets away from the main Sunday service, the more likely students are to fall away. Hmm. And so having replacing our Sunday school with the students actually being a part of the church on Sunday morning, serving in the church, is our way of trying to lower that 70% number to as close to zero as possible. Okay, okay, very good. Um, so what... Go through some details on COVID. So what are you going to do? What are the teachers going to do to help keep the students safe? Like what what precautions and how about masks and all of that? Okay. Um, so f- uh, first thing, um, masks um, will be worn in the classrooms. Um, the cl- classrooms are a little bit smaller. We're not able to do the six-foot distance. We're not able to do any of that. So we are going to have to require masks for all the students and the teachers um, who will be in uh, during that hour. Um, if the students are hanging out outside, as long as they're keeping distance, they can have their masks off outside. But once they make it into the farmhouse or they make it into a classroom, the masks have to stay on. Okay. Um, that little hallway uh, in the farmhouse um, that where the drinks and the bathrooms are, um, that tends to be a place where students like to congregate. Um, that place will no longer be allowed for that. Uh, we can't have congregation happening in that hallway. You can meet outside or you can go to your classrooms, um, but that hallway is strictly for moving to classrooms, getting drinks, or releasing those drinks. Okay. So is it okay then if you have um, four, five, six students and they're all clumped together outside? That's mask, no mask, what we're saying. Um, if you want to get like super close, you want to, yeah, see, look at that. Uh, if you want to get close, um, you're going to have to have masks on. Um, if there's like the cute girl who you really want to be close to, you have to wear a mask. Um, that's both for safety and for other reasons. Um, but then uh, if you are keeping distance outside, you don't have to have a mask on. Gotcha. Great pertinent question from a, a parent here. Where are the junior and senior high classrooms on Sunday morning in the farmhouse? Uh, so six, gra- six, seven, eighth grade guys will be meeting in the den, 
and six. Which if seven, you don't know where the den is, that's right at, straight at the top of the ramp. So you walk up the ramp and straight ahead. Yes. And then the sixth, seventh, eighth grade girls will be meeting in farmhouse classroom one, which is if you go into the farmhouse, take a right. It's the furthest classroom you can go. Okay. Uh, so you go down the hallway, take a right. If you leave the building, you've gone too far. That's almost always a good idea. Yes. And the high school will be? Uh, in the bonus room. Which is? Uh, if you go to the, the patio, the back deck area, there's a thing of stairs. You go up the stairs into that room. Awesome. Very good. Uh, I think that was all the questions for the student. You get that? All right, man. Okay, good. Okay. So one question that came in uh, that was just kind of a general, how will traffic flow look like in the back? I'm assuming this question is specifically about uh, in the lobby and things, what we're asking people to do is as they come into the building, as they leave the building and they're not in their seats, they have a mask on. So there will be people in the lobby and there'll be also be people outside in the courtyard talking to each other, but we're asking masks to be on during that time. Um, by the way, I think all of this, um, hindsight is 2020. We'll all know more down the road of what we did right and wrong. I really think that this has been managed fairly well. I think we've done a good job. I'm kind of proud of not only the way people have been kind to one another, but I think some of the decisions have been in keeping with what's happened. Um, we said four weeks ago we wanted to, to help break the curve down. And if you've not looked, the last 11, 12 days, it's been down almost every day. We're down, as a county, over 200 active cases from where we were just 11 days ago. I think the church has been helpful with that. So well done there. Uh, but we're also seeing reports from CDC. There's a pediatric group also that came out recently with a report saying they're encouraging schools to go back. In spite of the physical conditions and concerns about health, the emotional, relational concerns about not having in-person gatherings, long term is just is just much higher. So they're saying be safe about it, but do it, but bring them back because they need that interaction. And the church is right on those same pages. So uh, I appreciate the CDC coming out with an article to reinforce what we're saying right after we posted that. It was very helpful to the CDC. Uh, thank you, thank you for doing that. That's great. Uh, are there other questions coming in? I'm looking at the, our, our crew here. I don't think so. So if you have other questions, I think we've covered everything starting next Sunday. Three services, 815, 935, 1105. 815 is masks fully. 935, 1105 is masks uh, until you get in your seat and even when you get up after your seat. Uh, online at 920 for morning mug, 935 for uh, the service. No masks required at your house. Optional, but not required. Uh, pajamas, you know, it's up to you. How you want to do? Uh, kids and teen programming at 935. You do need to register for that. I heard a gasp. I think he's getting ready to say something wise. I'm not wise. I just remembered something else from okay. programming. One other thing I completely forgot about is um, if you cannot attend as a student our Sunday programming, we are doing a Zoom class at, during the third hour. So at 11.05, I will be on Zoom doing Sunday school. Perfect. So 935, teen programming, uh, in person, 1105 in person, live, but, but virtual. That's awesome. And I think the biggest thing is the pre-registration. If, if you have one takeaway and you have children, it's pre-register your kids. The sooner you get that done, the, the, the better off you are. So there will be limits on, on children's programming. If we reach that limit, you won't even see it available to sign up. Um, if on Sunday morning, there's some gaps in some of those classrooms, we will take uh, stu additional students until that gets done. But if you pre-register, we'll go ahead and print the sticker out. It'll all be ready for you. You can just come up and get it and not have to touch keyboards and all that kind of stuff uh, to help you out. So go on even now. I think that's available now, right? Go on even now and pre-register, and that would be fantastic. Uh, you'll hear more about this. Uh, be nice. Keep praying. Uh, we're getting through this together. I, I really do see uh, you know, some light at the end of the tunnel into a, a bit of a new normal for all of us but we're gonna to have to make some adjustments to make that happen. So continue to be nice, continue to pray, and we will see you, actually see you next Sunday. Take care.